What's good, YouTube? Today, we're gonna talk really, really fast, showcasing, highlighting, and zoning in on a card that I think you should be aware of, all the strengths, all the goodies, a couple deck lists to play as well in, and why you should be playing it. So if you enjoy this type of video, please let me know in the comments below. If I talk too fast, tell me to slow down. So we're gonna look at Mew EX. It is everywhere, so 151 is here at the end of the week. Mew has been promoted beyond. There's so many different artworks of the card. What's not to like? What makes this damn card so good? Well, it has an ability that lets you draw until you have three cards in hand. That's not always relevant. It's a 180 hit point Pokemon. It's two prizers, whatever. They don't seem that great. It's a psychic type. Historically, psychic has been really damn good. Since I've been playing for about six, seven years now, it always seems like there's a, a top psychic deck in format. There's a lot of support cards, whether they're items, supporters, abilities, you name it. There's a ton. It's a really great type to have, and it usually hits a good weakness. It has free retreat. There are a lot of decks right now playing ugly ways to get free retreat, whether they're bad Pokemon, whether they're stadiums, you name it, or playing extra switching cards. By naturally including a strong Pokemon with free retreat, you open up your turn. So if you start with it, you can more naturally select the Pokemon you want to start the game with or throughout your turns. And last but not least, it's colorless attack cost. So we don't care what the color deck you're playing. You can throw this into just about any of them. And I think that is terrific. And it lets you copy your opponent's active attack and use it as this one. The two ones you need to know, Giratina's Lost Impact, Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken. Both of those attacks have been warping the format in what's been good and how decks have been played. So by being able to copy those, you add a new layer to your deck and you make your opponent play differently because as soon as they see them used, they have to respect that you can copy both of those attacks rather effortlessly. So let's jump into the first deck list. Yokohama winning Maridon EX. This is the new wave. This is the cool shit. Zapdos mimics free retreat with an energy attachment. I didn't change a single card. They have some very strong options. They play the bravery charms. They play the switches. It gives you a more seamless line to reabuse your photon blasters, tandem units, bosses. The, the, the list is aggressive. I don't have to say anything. This is where I'm starting with going forward. And I'm going to test the, the crap out of it once Mew is legal and playable. So enjoy. Of course, the runner up from Yokohama, the 3000 person event. I did tinker a few cards with this one just to fit my own play style. So Lugia here, we got the Mew. Mew lets you copy Giratina. As I mentioned, Colorless Lugia lacked a big, strong hitting option into Giratina, which is why it kind of fell off in favor of Single Strike. But being able to copy Lost Impact means you have a basic Pokemon that can trade with their pseudo stage one. That allows you to kind of open up that matchup more. Don't be surprised if Mew EX makes its way as a two of into these decks going forward. Trying out the Block Wax, but I'm not really sure. The other cards that I changed, one Boss's Orders, one Zinnia's Resolve. Not sure what the appeal over there is for Zinnia and I just opted to throw in two Serena. Five gusting effects and four parting effects just seemed very, very good. We'll, we'll give it a try and let you know how it goes, but I am a Lugia bot, this is what I'm playing. Next up, simplified Chen Pao. So Chen Pao cut the Palkia, cut the crap, this is it. We cut down one Pokestop to get the Mew in here. We added a second copy of Iono because I expect a lot of Lost Box, I expect a lot of Kyogre. Having some disruption on top of big KOs is huge. We're copying the Moonlight Shuriken, so we have a second way of doing it. Copying Giratina's attack again, like I said, it warps the format. Being able Able to copy that for three energy rather than burning five for hail blade allows you to save superior energy retrievals and energy for the late game what's not to like it also helps with your cross switcher movement so you can start something ugly and put mew up and then assign your attacker you name it it's very interesting i do like chen pao going forward next up gudra out of the bulk bin what's not to like gudra was unplayable because of how bad it played into giratina it could not reliably hit over 200 damage but mew ex allows you to lost impact for three on a basic again i'm going to drive that point home. There's more applications of the card, but I'm just showing you the two biggest ones. Allowing you to knock out a Giratina means you can play as a one prize box, slap your Mew when you're ready to deal with the V-Star. I do like the idea of playing as a pseudo one prize loss box and then jumping in with the Mew or the Gudra, depending on. Double Rock Sand, because again, we need to mess up their hands. Decks that want to just sit there with a large hand are going to kill you. Giratina, we mentioned this a ton. Of course, the Boogeyman can use the best card out of the new set. We're going to simplify this deck. We cut the water energy. We still have access to Moonlight Shuriken, thanks to Mew, so we didn't lose anything, but we did allow ourselves to copy Lost Impact and Moonlight Shuriken and any other problematic attack and Lost Mine, you name it. We copy all of those attacks with Mew, and we don't have to play those janky one, two, or three of water energy. So when our opponent sees the Greninja, they might panic and put the Manaphy down. They should, and they have to worry about the Mew. We have a lot of options. Snorlax in this deck. Giratina might actually stay the course because of Mew, but it might also fall down because of Mew. 
I'm very interested to try Dehydrated Giratina. Last but not least, a Psychic deck that naturally abuses Mew. This might be a one or a two of. I took a few lists, one from Yokohama, a bit of Tords. I smashed them together. So Mew here can copy again. I mentioned the same attack. The Moonlight Shuriken and not normally have access to it is huge for this type of deck. And you sneak in with the Mew and dare them to have an answer. Or you can copy a big attack and go for that. And it's very interesting there. I do like the option that Mew provides. We did keep 11 Psychic Energy and two Reversal. I want to go heavy on my energy count because we want to use the basics more. All right, we got to the end. Let me know what you think of a video like this. Did I talk too fast? Did I not talk fast enough? I hope you're a believer of Mew after the end, after the end of this video. And until next time, guys, have fun. Take care. See you next time.